Hello everyone, welcome to myself, Max McGillivray from Beanstalk Global. What a fantastic broadcast we've got for you today. I'm so excited uh, because I'm sat here in England, but we're talking to Natalia in America, in Florida. Natalia, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and, and, and the reason for this broadcast is we've got a, a great partnership set up with uh, Natalia and her team at United Fresh. Natalia, can I give a bit of a background on United Fresh so everyone uh, is aware of you and your, your colleagues, please? Sure, yeah, I'm gonna try to make a long story short because United Fresh was founded in 1904, actually. Uh, it wasn't all the time at the same location. Uh, we are based in Washington, DC. And in, oh, now you put me on the spot. <laughs> We're based in Washington, DC. And our most of our members are from a US base, but also they have affiliates in other countries and they are global. So um, our members are, you know, from the grower to the retailer, everyone in the supply chain, you know, from A to C, um, we make sure that we cover the whole supply chain. So that's, that's a little bit of United Fresh, but we have so much, um, Max, that I will follow your questions. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and just for the, the people on the, on the podcast, let, let me give you, if it's okay, Natalia, you, you gave us a great intro. Let, let, let me give it some um, um, a, a little bit more information so that people are aware because I'm going to be very blunt with this. We want people from UK, Europe, um, Africa, Australasia to join United Fresh. So United Fresh, what we found is that they're an amazing trade group. The oh. membership represent the full breadth of the supply of the produce supply chain in the USA from small family businesses to large international corporations. United Fresh member companies bring together um, themselves across the whole produce industry to speak with one unified voice. As we all know, the fresh produce industry thrives on vital connections from family businesses to global corporations. And United Fresh has got a great reputa reputation for bringing together members across every segment of the supply chain to build relationships that are as solid with a handshake as with a contract. I love that. They empower industry leaders to join forces to shape government policy in the US. They deliver the resources and expertise companies need to succeed in managing complex business and technical issues. In addition, the training uh, that they, they provide um, and the um, development to individuals um, help those people advance their careers and produce. And through these endeavors, they unite the industry with a common purpose to build long-term success for their members and grow produce consumption. Yes, that's what we want. A number of international companies are keen to find connections to create new sales routes into the US or to sell their products and services to the fresh produce community stateside. United Fresh is totally geared up to uh, assist you, if that's of interest to you, to achieve that, that success. So on our Beansort broadcast today, we wanted to find out from Natalia as to how um, these, uh, these potential uh, new members of United Fresh could find out um, about United Fresh and, and, and what's it like to work with, with, um, with the states. But Natalia, you and I, we're, 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 I'd like to say you and I are a bit of a dream team, but it feels like we need a couple of other um, rock stars to, to come on in to give us a bit more of an understanding as to fresh produce within the United States and United Fresh. Natalia, who could you recommend, please, for us? You know, I, I have two people in mind that they're stars, like you just said, and, and you are one of the stars now. You can come and work for us. You sell it so well. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we invite Maida Sotomayor Kirk from Seal Sweet Green Yard and Mark Manger from Four Seasons? Fantastic. Mark, Maida, come on in. Fantastic. Hi, Max. Hi, Natalia. Hi. Uh, four, four air, sorry. <laughs> this, 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 guys, this is brilliant to, to um, have you on. If there's, if there's one thing that's where we've all learned through this oddity of this whole pandemic, is that the communication that we've now got, that we are whatever whatever it is, 4,000, 5,000 miles away, but to be able to communicate with you and to learn from you as to what is going on within the United States, the fresh produce sector, um, and United Fresh, I, th I think is, uh, is amazing. And, and you, you know, it was all a bit of a setup. That's in our green room. We were just talking about um, how amazing fresh produce is and, and how we're probably very blessed as to what a, what a community it is, not only in the UK, 
or Spain or South Africa or the United States, but globally. So I think that's, that's I'm, I'm just so excited about having everyone on, on today. So let, let's give a bit of, um, again, for the podcast, if it's okay, I just want to give a bit of a description as to Mark and Maida so that you're fully um, aware as to who they are. Um, and so we can then uh, find out uh, again as to what their views are as to what's going on within Fresh Produce in the in the US and um, and also United, United, um, United Fresh. So Mark, Mark is Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Fora Farms, where he's responsible for leading the sales team, developing new customer opportunities and guiding the company's strategic direction. He's been working in the produce industry for 34 years. He's attended the, the University of California and he currently sits on the United Fresh Board of Directors and chairs the United Fresh Produce Marketing Merchandising Council. Mark, does that sound about spot on? That sounds about spot on. Thank you, Max. I'm, I'm glad that the Mark has a, the Mark and Maida have their background of their company name in it. You know, so when we make a mistake, we know exactly where you're from. <laughs> and and the, the you, it's it's really interesting with them um, with Mark's background because um, the, the the quote of people produce planet. We're seeing this so often now. And I, I, Mark, I apologize if it's, it's copyrighted. I hope it hope it's not. But that whole purpose of people produce planet and the whole sustainability drive, I think, is uh, is fantastic. So, so let's go over to Maida. Maida is the CEO of her business and president of Green Yard USA. She's been in the industry for over 30 years and was originally from Havana in Cuba. In 2008, she became the company's first female CEO in its 100-year-plus history. And under her leadership, imports have grown to represent 80% of its turnover and has expanded to, to include other commodities. She was awarded Produce Woman of the Year in 2011 and has served on several industry boards and committees. In 2017, she was appointed to a position on the board of directors of the United Fresh Produce Association and chairwoman of the International Advisory Board. In 2018, she was named Produce Person of the Year by the Packer newspaper. In 2020, she was honored by the Produce Business Vanguards Award as one of the 35 innovators who shaped the industry over the past 35 years. So Natalia, what do you think? I think we've got two rock stars with us today, don't you think? We do, we do. You got three. Don't forget about me. So, uh, we, so we mustn't forget about Natalia. Natalia is a native of Argentina and is a living example of cultural integration, a natural leader with a deep sense of teamwork, backed up by a highly professional and strategic approach to business challenges and opportunities. She is United Fresh Manager of International Member Relations, where she's responsible for leading the international market. She's been in the industry for over nine years and her career in produce enabled her to help members grow by providing connections that expand business opportunities and increase sales and consumption. She was awarded Delaware Valley's most influential Latino in 2012. She sits on the board of directors of Global Women Fresh, uh, the International Advisory Board at United Fresh and the Perishable Committee at the Board of Miami and Port Everglades. So there we go, everyone. Three rock stars. So, so let's let's get into this. Uh, Mark, why are you in Fresh Produce? You, as an individual, you could have gone into politics. You could have gone into military. You could have gone into corporate affairs. How did you end up in Fresh Produce, please, sir? I just got lucky. To be honest, Max, <laughs> I actually was a uh, studied animal science at college. And I uh, was going to go into uh, the veterinary sciences, <clears throat> took a little sidetrack and took a temporary job in what I thought was uh, going to be a year or two in the produce industry. Um, actually with the uh, California Kiwi Fruit Commission, it was a brand new crop back then and fell in love with the growers, fell in love with the industry, with uh, just the health that we sell. And I got hooked and it's, uh, it's been almost 35 years now and, and absolutely no regrets and love getting up every morning and coming into work and, and doing the fresh thing. I, I, Mark, I love what you say that the health that you sell, because one thing that we want to do with these broadcasts is to encourage so many more younger people to come into the, into the sector, because what, come, come on, everyone, what, would you rather not work with the likes of Mark or Maida rather than a, a horrible energy drink that's doing no good. And, and look at Mark's background. I've got to keep on saying it. People, produce, planet. Maida, come on. How did you get into this sector? Likewise, you, you, you could have been running the US government now, couldn't you? <laughs> you would think, but no. <laughs> I, um, I completely took a different turn than Mark. Um, at least he started in agriculture studies. I was going to be a lawyer. Imagine mm -hmm. that. I was going to. Um, but what then I... And, and so my, my introduction to, to the produce industry was really by coincidence. I fell into it and then I've never left. Like Mark, 
I've been in it for over 36 years. I started really, really, really young, um, way young, of course. And, um, and I, I couldn't imagine my life as a lawyer today because it's probably, uh, not probably, it is the best business to be in. You're, you're in nature. You, you deal with people that love the earth, that love the, the ground, love um, sustainability. It's, it's one of the best businesses to be in by far. I, I, I agreed. And we were, we were sort of talking about this in the, in the green room, that the, the sense of purpose of being involved in, in fresh produce and know that you're doing good for people. Um, I'm also with the, I don't know that if you're seeing the same thing within the likes of UK, there's so much talk about regenerative agriculture, looking after the soils, putting more in to get less out or, or, or more, more out for the, for the, for the long, longer term. It's such an amazing sector to be, to be involved in. So, so let's get a snapshot of what you're seeing at the moment. Mark, what is the fresh produce within the, the States? And I, we also describe it in the UK that the United States to us is a bit like four countries. You've got whatever the figure is, 240, 250 million souls within, within, the, within the country. But fresh produce as a, as a whole, is this some rude health um, coming out of COVID? Or have you got some issues along the way? What, what do you see, Mark, within fresh produce within the United States? Um, you know, we're feeling very optimistic and positive about uh, where we are right now with fresh produce. Clearly, uh, COVID has been disruptive. Uh, when, uh, when our country shut down with the COVID back uh, uh, almost a year ago, um, food service, the restaurant, um, hospitality side of the business really um, came to a, a shuddering halt. And, um, and so that segment of the business is, has definitely been damaged and, and it's recovering slowly, but it really is going to be dependent on how quickly everything opens up. But on the counterpart, because so many people were suddenly working from home, uh, that we had nowhere to go, the retail side of the business, so our supermarket business, really took off with a flourish. And, and we've continued to see very strong retail sales um, throughout this entire COVID pandemic. Um, and, you know, I think it's for two things. One, people don't have anywhere to go, so they're eating from home and, and preparing a lot of their own meals. And two, because produce is healthy and people right now are concerned about the, the pandemic and, and concerned about their family's health, I think that we've seen a lot of emphasis on the healthy attributes of fresh produce and, and eating a diet rich in, in fruits and vegetables to, to try and boost your immune system and, and use as a natural way to, you know, um, try and, and avoid catching the pandemic or if you get COVID, healing from it quickly. Spot on. And Mayday, are you, would you duplicate Mark's comments or, or, or have you seen things slightly differently from your perspective? No, absolutely. We have seen the same thing. Although the food service business has definitely been hurt, we have seen retail rebound enormously to the point of having bottlenecks at certain times wow. because they couldn't handle the, the, the amount of product that was being um, uh, supplied. So the supply chain was under pressure. Labor has been under pressure. So there are some wonderful attributes, but there's also some downside. And um, we've had uh, we had a lot of, of which United has helped us with enormously, um, which is uh, labor issues, uh, government issues, to make sure that our people are being taken care of, that we were considered essential employees. So. When that happened, we were still able to function because at one point, essential employees could come in. And, and of course, that's why we still have meat and, and produce in, on, on our shelves. Um, one of the things we did see is that we saw an enormous amount of, of push for bag product. Um, that, that's something that happened only, I think, because people felt more comfortable or less or more secure with bagged product than, than loose. Um, so then the supply chain of, of uh, bags became an issue and the capacity to bag product became an issue. So you, you, do, you do see some of the good and the bad uh, in all of this at times. It, you know, it's fascinating within the UK, we have um, seen exactly the same thing. Um, we're now on our third lockdown that we're, we're hopefully going to be coming out of in, um, in, in March. Our first lockdown, it was the same thing about the uh, packaged uh, uh, fresh produce that people were preferring to buy that rather 
rather than loose because they thought that loose would uh, would potentially be um, uh, con contaminated. So, so we've got this 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 oddity that we've seen. So, in lots of the UK, we've seen a thirty percent rise of of some vegetable sales uh, because people are scratch cooking, cooking from home, and they're not going out. And as, as Mark um, um, especially intimated, that's could that be the cannibalization of sales from uh, uh, people not eating out? So the food service sector going down. Mark, what's your view as to when we are, and we'll be positive about this, when we're out of the, the pandemic, say say a year down the line when it's clear, do you think everything is going to bounce back to normal in the United States in terms of people going back to uh, food service, going back to, to, to restaurants, to, to outlets, to eateries to eat? Or, or, is, or is there something seminal now happened that people are going to be cooking more at home so it's going to be more retail sales that yourself and made have got to be focused on and it's a really good question we're having that conversation almost daily as we're trying to strategize uh, we just completed a three-year plan and we're trying to look forward and say what is going to happen i think it's going to be a hybrid max i think that people are learning new habits um, i think people are introducing themselves as they're trying to find ways to spice up being stuck at home by trying new recipes, new varieties, new types of produce. And I think those are creating healthy long-term habits. Um, but we are confident that when things open up and restaurants reopen up and we can start um, behaving more like an, a normal society again, that there is going to be a renaissance at the food service side of the business. I think people are really eager to get out of the house and, yep. to, uh, and to have a little bit of entertainment um, out here in Los Angeles, they just started doing a little bit of outside dining, and, and my wife and I went out for Valentine's Day, and it, it felt like a, uh, it, it just felt so special, and yet we were actually eating outside. We were freezing to death. We had jackets <laughs> on, but it really felt unique, and I, I think that in, in a small way, that's just reflective. I think people are eager to have some entertainment, but I really think that um, we'll end up somewhere in the middle. Um, I, I, I don't think that uh, we're going to see a big drop off in retail sales, but we're really eager to see the restaurants return. We're, we're concerned about that segment of our business and, and want to keep them healthy. Well, well said. And um, May, did you think um, the, the, the sales of, of produce will, will remain high ongoing as, as you work your way through the pandemic? You know, at first, when, when the pandemic first happened, we saw a big surge in frozen. Uh, people were so scared to, to, uh, for the perishability of fresh produce that the frozen aisles were completely empty, yet produce was still available. As, the, as we went on, and this wasn't a four-week thing, and we all realized that it was going to be longer, I think, as Mark said, we changed our habits, stopped in the, uh, uh, having frozen, and started looking more into the fresh. I, I don't think that's going to go away. I think um, the people that have learned how to cook will continue to cook and want to. I think the, the TV shows or cooking channels are are at a ho all, all rating high yeah, yeah, because yeah. people want some new recipes. So I, I think that, that that isn't going to change. But people will, I believe, want to go out and, and, uh, and have um, a, a, some form of normality as as we were at one time and, and it's slightly, and you know slightly my... off top uh, uh, Natalia, it's slightly, slightly off top i'm going to ask you this question to tell it's slightly yes. off topic but it'd be fascinating to hear your views what what do you think will happen um working from home wise do you think uh, in the states everyone's going to return back to, to normal um uh, when, when this is all, all cleared or are we going to have this uh um three days at home two two days at work uh, is it going to be a new new norm natalia what's going to happen within united fresh you within your team as an example please well in my team we have uh, me and another colleague that we've been working from home uh, before the pandemic but then now the whole team is is working outside of the office and um well what i think will happen is that we will just become more flexible in how many times a week we could go to the office and how many times we could work at, from home uh, for those who, who actually had to, to drive somewhere, right? Yep. Um, this, in this opportunity allows people that instead of driving an hour, they can wake up and exercise or do any other kind of routine before going to the office and just or just sitting at the desk. I think that would be a... There will be a mix on a hybrid too, working at the office and from home. 
um, because many companies realize that their office space was being uh, just uh, an office, right? And and people can still do their work from from home. Yeah. Yep. Well, well said. So so let, let's get get to this. So because we, we we don't want to. We don't want to talk about depressing things like like pandemics because we're going to work through this all because we're we're we're, we're a race that uh, is used to battling things um, and and creating success and, and eating healthily, especially eating more of a mark and, and made as a, a fresh produce. United Fresh, Mark, why has United Fresh been of benefit to you and your business? You know what? Um, you mentioned it in the beginning where where you use the word community. Uh, our our industry is really a community, and we're better when we work together than when we try and work independently. And United is our forum and it is our center point that brings us together as a community. Um, You know, our industry is so diverse and made up of so many different segments from the growing and shipping side of it, from the processing and distributor side of it. We have brokers, retailers, um, transportation people. And and what United is for us, it is a, a place where we can all meet in the center and share a kind of common goal, common vision, um, common issues. Um, we have a, a lot of regional groups uh, that, that represent their local areas and, and their, their industries that are specific to um, Florida or California or New York. But the reality is if we went back to Washington, D.C. from a um, you know, government regulation standpoint with all of these different voices, if we went to, um, you know, to message um, from from all of our unique perspectives, I think the message would get lost. But United brings us all together and allows us to speak with a common voice, whether it's advocating for new legislation, whether it is looking for, um, you know, uh, different uh, marketing uh, opportunities, um, and, and I think that's the that's really the strength that we found in it. It, it is united. It unites us as an industry. And, and what I found so interesting, I'm, I'm in the UK, but, but myself and Natalia and her, her colleague Mary, we got got on so well from how, how long we've we been talking. Uh, Natalia, it feels like um, forever, but it's only probably been four, five, six months. And I've learned so much from Natalia and, and Mary and her, her other colleagues, perhaps more so than I've actually felt um, from, from some trade groups in, um, in, within, within Europe. Um, Maida, what's your view? United Fresh, have they been a benefit to you and your business? You know, we've been a member of United Fresh, I think, for at least uh, five I mean, sorry, 50 years, 50 <laughs> some odd years. Um, the company is 100 and some odd years old. So I think it's from the beginning. I, we, we've been a, a member for, for many years. And it wasn't until recently that we started, I started taking a stronger look at United to see what, what, it, what, it, what did it offer? Why, why were we paying these dues? Why, what were we getting out of it? And then I had to put my money where my mouth was. And uh, they said, come to and sit on the board and, and you'll see. Um, so we, I did, I accepted a board seat and I quickly realized that uh, United did a lot of things that I, in fact, did not even know. Um, some of the things that Mark talks about, but I think you've heard, Max, that the United States has had a little bit of a government issue in the last four years and That's United, nice. <laughs> just a little. So, but United was really our voice um, amongst all the chaos. Uh, they sit in uh, wow. in right there in the government. Uh, they they're talking to government officials. They're talking to Congress people that make the decisions to say put uh, fruits and vegetables in the SNAP program. Um, uh, make sure that the treaty or the agreement with Mexico is is fair and correct for both sides. They are the, the, they bring their, their members' um, concerns, bring, bring it all together and creates one voice. And that is an invaluable thing that individually Mark and I couldn't do. Yeah. We would not be able to knock on the door of a congressperson and say, hey, listen to our problem. But United brings it as, as a group, as an association, and they listen and we get results. Wow. And, and, Okay, so to, to get that, that is a fantastic organization within the United States. What, why this 
this ambition to get international fresh produce companies to join United Fresh and become involved with with the United States fresh fresh produce? Mark, what's your views, please? I, you know what, I go back to community, uh, especially as a fresh produce industry. We're not just a domestic industry; we're a global industry. And you know, as um, consumers have had more access to the internet, to international traveling, to um, you know, to expand beyond just the borders of the United States, I think their tastes have expanded as well. And we have a responsibility to serve our customers by offering them new varieties, new innovative packaging, um, to offer them year-round supplies. And that's where we are a global industry. The, you know, the United States can't feed itself 365 days out of the year. And so I just think there's huge opportunities wow. to continue to collaborate beyond the borders um, so that, um, you know, we can work together to serve a, a broader market. And, you know, no, no, Max, Max go, go, adding go, go, go. To, to what Mark just said, uh, one of the benefits when you are a member of United Fresh is that you can serve as a member of one of our segment boards. Um, that differentiate us from other associations that we have different segment boards like grower, shipper, international advisory board, and so on. And also we have um, expert councils that, um, so there is opportunity for everyone and it will give you the, it will give you the visibility, it will give your company the visibility. We will learn from that international company and that international company will learn from us. So that's also adding to just what Mark just said. Yeah, but, and, and Mark, um, he's claimed it, but I was going to use the word um, collaborate and, and Mark stolen it. God damn it. But, but, because what I, what I was intrigued on is whether you would see um, someone from uh, the, the, the UK or Europe who's looking to um, export to the United States as a competitor. But, but Mark, you've hit it on, on the head. Collaboration. You can't feed the United States um, 24-7, uh, 365 uh, days a year with, with particular products. And, and as you say, there's, a, there's going to be an insatiable demand for more products especially as people get more and more excited about fresh produce as they get more and more um, aware of it. So it's, it, so, so it's about collaboration. So, so Maida, would you, would you agree with that? Or have you got anything else to add as to why um, overseas uh, companies should join United Fresh and get involved with, um, with the USA fresh produce sector? Well, as the chair of the International Advisory Board, I have a lot to say about that because <laughs> I, I truly feel that uh, United... Um, was missing a, a big segment of the of the of the of their membership in not bringing uh, value to the international world because as Mark says we for example we can't purchase a pineapple it's not grown here in the United States mainly most avocados although there are California are imported um, uh, mangoes majority of them are all imported so if we want to have a mango we have to learn that it comes from all over and that and we have to broaden our horizon. So international members for United are, are becoming much more and more important. But also United is becoming more important because we're offering international, um, our international members a lot of benefits. For example, uh, food safety. This is such a big topic and it's not only a topic for the United States, it's a topic I know in the UK, in Germany. Uh, Green Yard as a global company, we, we have a lot of resources to talk to us about food safety. But what about a smaller company that doesn't have those resources? Becoming a member of United helps them be, get all these resources at their fingertips because they're able to uh, obtain it. We have an educational session that's coming up in March that talks about what are, the, what are the good and bad things about importing? How do you import? How do you export? Um, so anybody, anywhere in the world, can, uh, can take these sessions and learn. Um, I think it's, it's an invaluable, especially now internationally when you can't travel, yeah. this is the best way to do it, to, get, to take the advantage of all the things that United can offer. Well, well done, and, it, and it's segueing really nicely, Mark, to Brandstorm. Could, could you tell us about Brandstorm, please, and, and how that's gonna be of interest to um, overseas fresh produce companies to get involved with, with, uh, with United Fresh, please? You bet. Um, before I talk about Brandstorm, I would encourage anybody that's listening, if they're not familiar with United, to, to log on to United Fresh's site. 
And, and you'll see that there's actually a member toolbox that talks about all of the different communities, boards, activities, events that United has to offer. And, and, you know, it really is, I love that they call it a toolbox because that really is, there, there's so many tools to help companies, big or small, build their business. And um, I am um, honored to be chairing United Fresh's Marketing and Merchandising Council, which is one of their expert councils that they have focused on helping companies improve their marketing programs. And marketing is a universal language whether we're marketing in, in France or we're marketing in Africa or we're marketing in the United States. And we um, have had a conference that we call Brand Storm. Um, this year it is going to run from March 9th through the 11th. And it really is a marketing conference for produce marketers that was designed by produce marketers for produce marketers. Wow. It's really the one chance out of the year where marketing is a community that we can all get together and um, really sharpen our skills, um, hone our message, um, and, and learn from each other. We actually bring in a lot of expert speakers um, from outside of the industry so we can learn what other industries that uh, our marketing can do. And, and it's going to be virtual this year, which is an absolutely perfect setup for the international community. We ironically, but not ironically, have a global marketing trends uh, workshop that's part of the conference. And we're going to hear from some uh, experts from um, the Netherlands, from Mexico and South Africa. So it really will resonate with an international audience and, and really encourage um, listeners to, to listen in. You know, uh, we have so much that we learn when uh, those of us that attend Fruit Logistica, um, when we, we go overseas and see the, you know, really unique and innovative marketing that Europeans do. And, and I think that, you know, as Americans, we do some pretty innovative marketing as well. But think how great our marketing can be if we go back to that collaborating world and we, word and we share our ideas with each other and, and, you know, look for great examples on how we can tell our story better and get more people eating fresh fruits and vegetables. What's that, Mark? I'm, I'm so excited about uh, Bransall because there's a, there's a perception which I think is um, correct that especially within the UK within fresh produce we're, we're very poor on branding because the retailers don't allow us to have brands and what I've learned um, having um, uh, listened to some uh, key American speakers over, over the years when they kindly come over to the UK and also learned from Natalia and, uh, and, um, and Mary, um, is that I, my perception is that you're far better on marketing and branding within the state. So we desperately want to learn from you as to what the magic dust is, as to how we can create a brand. And it's also the same with the, U, in the UK marketing term, create a brand, not a label. It's very easy to get a piece of fruit and stick, it, stick a label on it, but it, there's got to be... It's got to be more authentic as, as the whole brand. So that's why I'm really keen to be involved with Brandstorm. So I'd encourage anyone who is uh, watching this from outside the United States who wants to learn from the experts, because I think the, the US are the experts on that marketing side to, to, to get involved. Um, Maid, are, are you involved with Brandstorm? I hope you are. Oh, yes, of course. Oh. Um, well, I, I, I definitely either I, I, I've been once, but I always send a uh, staff member to Brandstorm because it's perfect. It's a perfect way for you to have people that norm normally would not be able to travel or can travel. Now you could do it from home. Um, yeah. So I have, I think, two people registered for Brandstorm from our staff and, and it gives them a great incentive also to, to be part of that community that Mark was talking about. And Natalia, how can we find out more about Brandstorm, please? Well, as, as Mark mentioned earlier, you can go to uh, our website, www.unitedfresh.org, and it will, it will be right there on the right side. It's because this is one of our main events, and it's the first one of the year. Um, so we are very excited that you, uh, Max, will be the, the host for that panel, and will bring all the international attendees to, to listen to this panel of experts. But... In the website, you can find out more or they can send an email to me. At, I, can, I can share that information later. Fantastic. So, so everyone, just to 
to, to wrap up because I don't uh, don't hold you up. What, what I've learned today, and it just compounds everything I've already learned from Natalia and, uh, and Mary and the rest of the United Fresh team. I, th I think Mark has, has stated it. It's all about collaboration. We are in one world of fresh produce and we all want to collaborate and share. And using these virtual platforms in, in these strange times, that there is going to be an amazing positive out of this, uh, this negative that we're all going to work through. And so we, if we can learn from United Fresh and from the likes of the Brandstorm event, it's going to be fantastic and perhaps you might learn some things from, from, from us we've, we've talked in the, in the past about how there's a perception um in the u.s that we might be slightly better on um on the likes of packaging say or supply chain say and we would love to get experts um to be, be presented to you so that you can learn from us and likewise we, we can learn learn from you so i'm really keen to be able to promote united fresh on that on this basis so to everyone just before um we wrap up i'd, I'd love to get a, a view as to what what you think we're going to see in the next it, it's like one of those horrible interview questions everyone where do you want to be in five years time but what but, but seriously where, where, where do you think the sector is going to be in in the in in the, in the short to the medium term is it a good sector to be in for those already in it and the graduates that are, that are watching or should we all stay clear of, uh, of fresh produce it, is there going to be success in fresh produce mark what do you think Absolutely. Um, you know, clearly I'm biased. Clearly I've invested, uh, you know, the lion's share of, of my life and, and my entire career to fresh produce, but I really can't think of a better industry to be in and, and not, it, it, you can't just think of it as somebody that is on the phone selling or, or marketing. There's just so many aspects to our industry from, you know, technology to transportation, to um, varietal development, to, you know, uh, engineering innovation. And uh, this is an exciting time. Our industry is changing rapidly. Technology is driving us into a whole new frontier. And, and it really is an exciting time for young people to be thinking about a career in fresh produce. It, it is, uh, you know, it's not your grandfather's produce anymore, um, produce industry anymore. It's, it's, you know, I don't even know what our industry is going to look like in five years. And, and that doesn't frighten me. It excites me. And, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's hard to explain that to, to young people, but um, it, it really is a phenomenal industry. I can't say enough good things about it. Maida, what, what do you think? I, I accused you earlier of uh, you should have got into government to, to sort out us government, but are you going to stay within fresh produce? Well, this is what I've done all my life. I'm not expecting to change at this point in my life. Um, but it is, it is uh, as Mark has said so very well, it, it is a, a very, we have a great story to tell. We're not selling, what did you say, Max, a little while ago? We're not, we're not selling high sugar drinks Correct. Or, or tires or something boring. We, we are selling life and, uh, and healthy. And, um, and we're, we're trying to make uh, a, a healthier future as our Green Yard tagline yeah. says. Uh, and we believe in that. We really believe that this, that, that produce can change and can change obesity, can change the, the way we live, can change our health and can make us a better, uh, better humans and do it while still maintaining a good sustainable life for the future of our children and the land that we cultivate in. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's a, like Mark said, it's an exciting time. If I, I would have, I would have been very bored to be a lawyer today. I am very glad I chose what I chose. It has worked very well for me and my family. Well, well said. So Natalia, what I think with our two rock stars, the, th the thing that I've come away with is that apart from the, the growing sunshine, they're doing so much, so much good for, for, for all of us and the, uh, and, and the planet is the collaboration and I'm so annoyed that Mark used the word before I did, is the collaboration that uh, United Fresh want to show to other fresh produce uh, companies and growers and individuals and consultants worldwide to join United Fresh. So, so shall we just give one more plug, Natalia, for, uh, for Brandstorm? Can you just give the dates again and the website again um, as to how people can join up for the Brandstorm event, please? Yes, it's, uh, the website is our website at unitedfresh.org. And the dates are March, uh, Mark, well, the dates March is? March 9th through the 11th. Yeah, so yeah. please join us. Fantastic. Everyone, well, well done. Thank you very much for your, for your time. Um, so we're going to push this message about uh, joining United Fresh.
collaboration. They are not a talking shop. They're completely the opposite. They want to embrace you and bring you into their, their family, into their community. Maida, Mark, Natalia, thank you very much for your time. Uh, please keep safe and we'll look forward to seeing you at the Brownstorm event in early March. Terrific. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Max. And happy Bye. birthday. Yeah. Thank Happy you very birthday. much. Okay. <laughs> you sure, you weren't meant to tell anyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'll come around to mine for drinks later. No, no, don't, we'll eat, do don't eat all the cupcakes at one day. Okay, we'll do. Thank you, everyone. Keep safe. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.